Hey, it's Detangler with the Daily Detangler, and I want to talk about engaging with curiosity. What is this thing? Are you curious yet? Well, this is the uh, the Blue Angel Sea Slug. Did you know that these things existed? Glaucus Atlanticus. How's that for some Latin? It's actually across the world's oceans. And it's a vicious carnivore. It has a huge, big sting. It has external lungs. And it's got multiple gender roles. It's both male and female. And it's actually the size of a quarter. Not this big. So basically, it's a sea slug unbound by gender roles, capable of producing a sting that will make you cry. And it's the size of a quarter. Did you know that this, this actually exists? It's real. Could you imagine me trying to explain this to you without a picture? How hard would that be? Would you be curious and ask me about it? Or would you expect me to tell you all about it so you can get this picture in your mind? What are my chances of actually <laughs> explaining this well enough for you to visualize this? They're pretty slim, actually. So this idea of curiosity is actually a two-way street. So let's talk about what's working on the team as we engage with curiosity. Questions are, are working when people ask questions specific kind of questions I'm going to talk about, answers when they seek answers, and then also how they frame their questions and answers and how they frame their approach to being curious. So let's talk about questions. Let me ask you something. Does it pay to be curious? How? How so specifically? If you had to answer that, how does it pay to be curious? Well, in the context of the orchestration orb, there's a lot to be curious about. The technology, the information, people, and process. From a technology perspective, technology can actually prompt us to take certain action, which is helpful. It also can facilitate action as we ask questions. Also, probing questions can help us get information that we need. If I'm trying to ask questions and figure out the blue sea slug, the way in which I probe and ask questions is, is uh, critical. Also, the idea of, of uh, reframing or helping people understand the perspective. If I were trying to explain a blue sea slug, I may have to reframe by asking questions. So questions can help reframe as well. Also, from a process perspective, questions that we ask can help us understand the sequence of those processes. So from a orb perspective, prompting is about technology, probing is about information, reframing is about people, and process is about sequencing. The interesting thing about these questions is they're, they're fueled by curiosity. Do they give you an answer, though? Actually, curiosity provides the questions. Curiosity is a leading component of asking questions. We ask questions because we're curious. So are you, what are you curious about with regard to the work that we're doing? If I ask you to make a list of what you are curious about, what would that list be? Could you document it? What are you curious about? What else is working? Well, answers. Take a look at the left. Haunted house subtracting. There were four ghosts, then one ghost flew away. How many ghosts are left? 4 minus 1 equals 0. It's 0 because ghosts are not real. So the interesting thing about answers is when you think about the information, the process, the sequencing, the, the ability to interact with this paper, in other words, the orb, when you think about the orb, how we interpret the, 
the question is contextual. And there's a lot of implications to that. What are some implications of, of answering this subtraction question this way? Well, it depends. And that's the thing about answers. They're very contextual. But what leads to answers? In, in our discussions and in our team, scientific results lead to answers. Scientific method leads to answers. Not our opinions, not what we think, not even our past experiences. It's the scientific approach we take. Or else we end up with a discussion about who's right and who's wrong, and we end up talking about are ghosts actually real, as opposed to pursuing the actual challenge. So curiosity creates questions. Scientific results lead to answers on our team. That works, but it's hard to scale and it's hard to have discipline. Another thing that's working on our team that Catalyst is really good at is framing. Here I've got a conceptual map of water. If I talk about water, there's a lot of places we can take water. We can take it into the states where a lot of where I would go, solid, liquid, gas, but we could also take it and be reframed around the molecules and the purpose of water. And how do you make atoms? How do you agitate the molecules? How do you create steam? Both of these are legit paths. What's water made of? And what does water exist in? The different states. It's very easy in this context to think about perhaps being in one or the other branch of this discussion. Framing helps us get on the same page. So what questions are you asking and what answers are you seeking with regard to the frame of reference? What do you actually know about go to customer? What do you actually know as an absolute in go to customer? Do you know all the answers? How do you integrate new concepts with what you've known all your life? Is there anything different? If, if there's anything different, how do you rationalize that? Do you declare an answer or do you get curious? And how do you move forward in what you've learned and what you're learning on a daily basis? Do you constantly learn and do you constantly ask questions and seek answers and frame things out? In other words, do you continue to be curious? This is the, the fuel of a lot of innovation. Curiosity leads to questions. Scientific approach leads to answers. And it's all fueled by curiosity. That works on the team when we do it. We've been able to create a lot of new content. We've been able to create a lot of new research, a lot of the visuals that are being used with clients. The challenge with that is our innovation has to be so rapid and our innovation has to be so fast, we actually need to do it more. So how do we, how do we continuously do that? Well, one of the things that we can do is focus on our principle and that's being an orchestrator. You don't have to have all the questions and you don't have to have all the answers. You don't have to frame everything out yourself. You can rely on a team and you can orchestrate that team. Have you thought about orchestrating around the questions and the answers that you're seeking? Have you thought about being more curious? Have you made a list of things you're curious about on the team and engaged others? That's what being or an orchestrator is about. Orchestrators connect the dots because the answer is found among everybody, not just on somebody's shoulders. So what does this have to do with us? Well, focusing on what matters, finding the time to be curious, and to actually go in and engage in a way that uh, helps us understand and helps us apply an approach is much different than having all the answers. So we don't have to be the smart person that has all the answers. We have to be smart about how we engage. We don't have to be doing it on ourselves as a heroic effort. We can be orchestrators who actually create uh, a, a new set of uh, outputs because we're curious and because we've framed and because we've asked the right questions and we've applied the method to get to the right answer. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. I look forward to the next one. If you have any questions or thoughts on anything you're tangled about, feel free to reach out. Also, make a list of what you're curious about and share it with others. Take care.